Hi everyone, and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully, and this week we have a special interview uh, shot on location in Portland, Maine, where we were a couple of weeks ago on vacation. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick heads up that the knitting store where we were, the Knitting Nook, um, was open at the time of the interview, and so you will hear some background noise and some people talking. Um, you might also hear some static from the microphone. For some reason, I was having a little trouble with the sound quality. And so while I've done my best to mitigate that, um, this may not be a good episode to listen on headphones. If you usually listen on headphones, I would suggest using external speakers this time around. Um, thanks for joining us and enjoy the interview. Uh, well, I have a strong restaurant background. Okay. But I have a love of fiber, mm -hmm. and it was just a natural combination. Right. I felt as though they went together very well. Welcome back to Gay Show Crafts. I'm Sarah, and today I'm at the Knitting Nook in Portland, Maine, with uh, the owner, Lisa Ford. Lisa, thanks for making time to be on the show today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, so this is a new establishment, um, and it's a combination of knitting store and cafe, um, which I haven't seen very much. Um, when I did my research, out there in the world. when I did my research, I'm one of a kind. Yeah, I didn't find anything like my concept anywhere. Yeah, I um I think it's a great concept, and I'm surprised that you're the only person at least that we know of that's right. doing this uh this you know this business model what inspired you to to do both uh well i have a strong restaurant background okay but i have a love of fiber mm -hmm. and it was just a natural combination right i felt as though they went together very well they do i've tried to um start groups of my own you know in local bars and pubs and things because i think it's just natural you want to have a, you know like it is at home you want to have a cup of tea or a glass of beer or something and too, so it's nice to do that absolutely in a dedicated space. Um, and you've only been in business for about half, six months, half a year. Yep, yeah, about six months. The uh, yarn shop opened August first, and the cafe September first. So fully functioning since September first. Okay, that's great. And what kind of things do you offer in the cafe? It's uh, so the cafe, and I, I want to strongly stress that I encourage people to come and have more than just a cup of coffee. Um, that's how I'll stay in business. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a very nice menu. And I also want to stress that this is not exclusive to fiber artists. I have the entire community. Mm -hmm. I have children who are 12 years of age that come and hang out and have, you know, a, a soda and a cookie and hang out and talk to me. Or, you know, older people that don't, men, women, it doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. This is an all-inclusive type place. Mm -hmm. uh, the menu is very simple. We're not cooking at all. Mm -hmm. I have no fry lighters. Uh, when you cook, it makes smells. It will get into some of the very nice fibers that we carry. And mm -hmm. um, I think that everyone who is a fiber artist appreciates the fact that I'm not doing that. Um, right. <clears throat> so the menu consists of appetizers, a uh, bunch of cheeses from New England. Uh, so a cheese and fruit board. We have a cheese and meat board. Lovely salads that are seasonal. And then uh, an offering of sandwiches that change probably a couple times a year. Right. Yeah, so it's nice. So you can come in and have a meal. And, I, you know, um, I, I've watched some other interviews. You've, you've given a couple of interviews, mm -hmm. and there was a recent news piece as well. We'll link to that in the show notes so people can find that. And what I liked about that was that you were um, aiming towards kind of getting new knitters involved. Correct. And I think this is a great gateway, right? Like feed them a tasty snack, and then, oh, what's that other stuff over Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Well, I find that um, they can explore it. the yeah. reason why I'm appealing to... Uh, the new knitter uh, mm -hmm. and the younger knitter mm -hmm. is one, younger knitters are going to be the ones who are going to take me through my retirement. Yeah. And two, uh, people who are experienced, mm -hmm. who know about yarns, are going to find me. Right. So that's kind of, they're going to find me. It's the newer people that I'm interested in. Right. Gearing towards. Absolutely. And you're trying to make this a community space. Absolutely. It seems it's like, a community space. Um, I'm not very familiar with this neighborhood or with Portland in general, but it seems just from what I've observed outside, there seems to be a lot of young families around. So, yes, this is a very you know, up-and-coming neighborhood, and uh -huh. it's very much a neighborhood, and that's what I was looking for, is right. a place that had families, a sense of community, a place for people to come and convene. Yeah, so it's really your local cafe and also Absolutely. yarn shop. Yeah, great. Um, let's talk about some of the yarns that you're carrying. So you have 
um, quite a range in price points, which I think is really good, again, for getting new neuters involved and, and meeting um, different needs. Um, I wanted to focus on a couple of the um, more specialty yarns or local yarns. We'll start with uh, Swan's Island. This is dyed right here in Maine, and I think they also um, source some of their wools from Maine as yes, well. Yes, not all of them, but um, right. many of them. And this uh, yarn specifically carries three purposes for me. Mm -hmm. It is the only Maine yarn that I'm carrying at this point in time, though mm -hmm. others are soon to happen. Mm -hmm. It's the only organic yarn that I have, mm -hmm. and it's the only hand dye that I have currently. Yeah. So it's three purposes for me. That's nice. This is really nice. This is one that I was not as familiar with. This is their dip dyed collection, 100% certified organic merino, and you can see some of that hand dyeing right in this particular skein. And in this dip dye collection, they have two types. There's mm -hmm. the big dippers and the little dippers. Big dippers having more dye, the little dippers having less. Okay. Um, and that really appealed to me, which is why this is the one that I'm carrying at this time. Yeah. And um, this kind of, you know, variegated or, um, you know, different tones in one skein, that's really popular right now. With a Very lot of popular. Patterns, so I think that's it's a great choice. And then we also have a whole range, maybe we can all <laughs> hold them all up, um, here from Juniper Moon. And they just make lovely. This is definitely a luxury um, line. Um, and I'm carrying a lot great, of their um, their Harriet and Moonshine products uh -huh. in all weights. Yeah. Every weight that yeah. there is, I have of their yarn. Right. So we have a bulky or a chunky over there. The Moonshine chunky. Yeah. And then this is. This is the Harriet Great. So this is the, the most bulky that I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So two ply. I've got something nice and fluffy right here. This one kind of has a marled effect on it. And, and that's their worsted weight. Yep, this is a baby alpaca. And then this is also probably a worsted. A more solid color, almost a tweed. And fingering weight. Yep. And I love that chartreuse. That's really in now. In fact, that, yes. that combo this color is, is really good. This, this is color like, is very popular. This right now. Absolutely. <laughs> the yellow, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's really, really good. Yes. Cool. Um, I want to talk a little bit too about your history as a netter. Mm -hmm. um, so you you learned when you were a child. I was. I was fourteen. Um, actually, I think my grandmother tried to teach me when I was around eight. I uh -huh. kind of remember that, but I wasn't sitting still at that point. But when I was fourteen, yeah. she uh, and I'm one of many uh, children. Mm -hmm. I have six sisters, mm -hmm. and my oldest sister and I were the ones who really uh, started to really care more about what my grandmother was doing than anyone mm -hmm. else. So she took the time to teach the two of us. She was also an um, avid crocheter, my grandmother. But yeah. she um, she was born in 1916, and it wasn't uh -huh. a fad for her. Uh -huh. It was a way of life. This sure. is how she you know, was able to get sweaters for her family and socks and all of those things. So, right. um, so she passed the love of the fiber on to us. I never picked up crocheting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just knit. Um, my oldest sister picked up both. Mm -hmm. So uh, I also was very fortunate to have my grandmother until she was 102 years old. She passed recently, about five months ago, um, and so I was very, very fortunate to have her. Just about the time you were opening the shop. In fact, oh I was. Uh, she knew that I was doing it. She was living in Florida at the time, and the yarn shop had, had actually opened, uh -huh. and I was taking pictures, and I was waiting for the cafe to open, right. because she doesn't do anything technologically wise. Right. So I was waiting to for the cafe to open, take some pictures, mm -hmm. print them out, and send them to her. She passed about a week before this opened. But she knew it was happening, so right. she was very proud and very excited about it. That's, that's great. Yeah, it's great to have that continuation. I did not. My family were sewers. Okay. And so, you know, I didn't get into any of this until I was an adult. So I'm glad I discovered it. Yeah, right. And I think it's great that you're helping younger people get into it early because um, it's, it's such a cool skill. I think I hear a lot of people who learn it, oh, I was, you know, between the ages of, say, four and eight, and then I didn't take it up. But then I remembered that I could do it, and then I came back to it later. Right. And so you plant the seed, and then it comes to it later. One of the ways that I want to be able to uh, give back to the younger knitter is mm -hmm. um, there's a, a yarn shop that's been important for a very long time. And when I was in college, I, I had already gotten a love for fine fibers, mm -hmm. but I did not have the pocketbook for fine fibers. Mm -hmm. And they were very kind and realized that I was a trustworthy person, and they did layaway for me, oh, so I could still make sweaters, and they would trust that every week or two, I would show up and pick up a skein or two of yarn as I could afford them. So, in order to get ten skeins of yarn that I needed to make a sweater, yeah. all the same dye lot, they mm -hmm. would put it aside and actually did layaway for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to be able to offer that to my college students. 
Yeah. So if they have a lot of knitting and like fine fibers, mm -hmm. I'm willing to do that. That's really, really nice of you. Yeah. And I think that's great too because when you're working with the best you can afford, I think it gives you that sense of engagement of like, I really, you know, I spent good money on this. It's really nice stuff. I want to finish my project Absolutely. so I can wear it and be proud of it. And, Absolutely. You know, not give up halfway through and go, oh, well, the yarn only costs a dollar is gained. So Correct. I'm just going to walk away from this. Like, if you invest your money, then you're also going to invest your skill and your, Absol your time. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. So that's great. And um, are you going to offer former uh, formal workshops? Well, we do well? offer okay. lots of classes. Yeah. In fact, um, every month we've offered uh, probably at least four classes, mm -hmm. mostly the beginner level, but also intermediate level. We had mm -hmm. a, a class last week that was color work. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I have a woman who works yeah. for me who I call a, Mar a Martha Stewart on steroids. <laughs> I open this cafe and yarn shop, and I have not had any time to knit on it. Uh -huh. So all the things that are on display, she has done, and she's having the best time ever. Oh, that's uh, great. I pulled her out of retirement. I'd asked her, when I had the concept of doing this, I asked her, did you think you ever wanted to work again? She's like, not in a million years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I told her what I wanted to do, and she said, that's like, not working. Like That's yarn. playing. Yes. Like yarn. She says she thinks it's playing. <laughs> so she's having a great time and she's knitting away, which is, and she's also the one who's doing most of the instruction. Yeah. Because I find myself otherwise busy with other things. <laughs> yeah. Running, running two sides of a business. It's, it is a lot. So. Good. Um, well, we will link to everywhere online. You're very active on your Facebook page. Um, we also have an Instagram page. It's okay. Very active as well. Good. Yeah. I try we'll to keep link to social those. media. So that people can find you, and uh, and the cafe is open, so you might hear noises in the background. I didn't say that at the beginning, but um, we're just going to wrap up a short interview so Lisa can get back to doing her work. But thank you again for taking the time. Thanks for coming to visit. It's great to see you, and uh, and tune in next time. We'll have more for you. Cheers. <laughs>